Good evening, sir. Uh, today on our presentation on bottom of pursing, we'll basically discuss what is pursing and what is bottom of pursing. So a detailed explanation of L LR0 and LR1 person. And we'll also discuss some MCQ questions regarding, regarding bottom of pursing. In this first slide, we will discuss what is pursing. Pursing basically means breaking something down into smaller components like ex uh, for example you know, breaking a sentence down and explaining what the, the verb does in terms of data the compiler unit does the sequential parts operation in a top down parsing and bottom up parsing after the lexer produces its tokens parsing is affected by the parser software component on the input data from the analysis uh, analysis phase of the lexer wherein the output is checked uh, for appropriate grammar or syntax and shown as the um, and shown as the uh, purse tree with uh, difference between top down pursing and bottom up pursing uh, indicating the uh, sequence of tokens there are basically two type of purses available and there are bottom up purser and top down purser here we can see an example example uh, grammar with uh, the following productions e gives e plus t e gives t t gives id and t gives open parenthesis e close parenthesis so <clears throat> before so, uh, before uh, solving lr0 we first augment the grammar now why we do this so we augment the grammar so we can uh, actually get to know that when the particular uh, variable variable is processed so starting on with the uh, for starting symbol e we have taken e dash gives e then dollar set dollar symbol this symbol will mark the acceptance of the grammar then we will move on to the canonical items uh, as you can see on this part there is some mysterious dots coming here so why have we put these dots these dots indicate that that the variable in the left side of the dot is yeah, is still to be processed that is it has not been processed yet so <clears throat> first we will try to process the e variable the uh, grammar uh, the augmented grammar on uh, uh, seeing c variable goes just down below which gives e dash gives e dot here we have shifted the dot symbol after the e which means that it has already seen the e variable then the dollar symbol comes ex as it is then what we will do is we have just processed e and then we will open the uh, productions associated with e here e gives e dash uh, e dot plus t then we come to the second production which is again dot e and uh, again on processing e is come it comes to the uh, comes to this state then moving on to the third production we can see that e gives dot t now uh, processing t we get this this state e gives t dot and since it uh, there is nothing be, uh, beside t so we will just keep there then we will come to the fourth production which is t gives dot id now upon processing id as you can see here we comes we come to this state which gives t uh, gives id dot now again here there is nothing beside on the right hand side of id so we will just stop here then moving on to the last production we have t gives dot open parenthesis e and uh, close parenthesis and upon processing open parenthesis as we can see here it gives this augmented grammar now uh, now we have op uh, processed uh, uh, bracket uh, open parenthesis which uh, which gives t gives open parenthesis dot as we can see here dot is shifted after the parenthesis then e 
and then close parenthesis. Now we want to process E. So we will just open all the productions. Uh, as you can see here, these are all the productions related to E. So we have opened all the productions relating to E, which uh, which are E gives dot E plus T, E gives dot T, E T gives dot ID, and T gives dot open parenthesis E and close parenthesis. Now <clears throat> this, uh, as we can see that the this below part is quite similar to this below part. So the so this part. Upon seeing the variables, will be going to the similar states. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> e on uh, processing E gives this, which is all similar to this one, just uh, except the first first production, which was E dash, and uh, then the second production on receiving E again goes to here already, and uh, E uh, goes E uh, yes E goes to dot T. And this goes to this production here, as we have already seen here also. That dot t gives here, and again dot t gives here. And a dot id upon again on seeing id comes to this state. And uh, this uh, this last production on up, uh, seeing parenthesis again goes to itself. Again goes to itself. See this open parenthesis. <coughs> So uh, now, here coming on to this state, we have we will come again to these states later. Let's open this state first. So this is this production is already complete. Now there is nothing to go beyond the dollar symbol. So this marks our acceptance state. Reaching at this state, we will know that our grammar is accepted, and then we will moving move on to Next production, which is E gives E dot plus T. Now processing plus symbol because the, it's on the right hand side of the dot. So now we will process plus symbol. So opening plus, we will get this state, which gives uh, which is E gives E plus dot. See, dot is shifted after plus. Okay, so and then. It's uh, on the right hand side. We have T. So then we will open all the productions related to T. These two are the productions related to T. So we are opening them here. T uh, gives dot ID and T gives dot open parenthesis E and close parenthesis. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah. Uh, then let's open this first production uh, because there is. Uh, T on the right hand side of dot, so we have to shift uh, dot again uh, on the right hand side of T. So now we will open T symbol. So opening T symbol, we get E gives E plus T dot. Now there is nothing on the right hand side of dot, so we will stop here for this particular production. Now moving on to second production, T gives dot id we have already seen this type of production here and here so on receiving i on processing id it goes to this state here and uh, t uh, gives dot open parenthesis again we have seen this type of production here and here already so this on receiving uh, open parenthesis reaches on this state so we have completed with this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and lastly coming on to the remaining productions. So there is uh, again a production left dot e. So we will open this one, and we can see that t goes to open parenthesis e and dot. See dot has shifted to the right hand side of e, and then. Since it is a uh, this bracket is a uh, terminal, so we won't open that. It is a terminal. So and the remaining production is e gives e plus uh, e dot plus t because we have opened dot e and here also we have a dot e. So we have opened this one. 
they don't have dot e so we have not opened the, them so e dot plus t and lastly upon opening close bracket we will get this state t gives open parenthesis e close parenthesis dot and since there is nothing to the right hand side of dot we will stop here so as you can see we have got uh, some three to four states which uh, at which we will stop first uh, is this one then this one then this one this one and this one these are the reduced states which means that we cannot go beyond further these states we will stop at these states and the uh, the remaining uh, sorry and the remaining states which are which we can call the shift states which means that these states are shifting from one state to another as you can see this shifts from uh, here and this shifts to this this shift to this now this was our canonical items for lr0 items now we are going to number the productions uh, we will here we will not consider that our augmented production only we will consider the original productions. So E gives E plus T is marked as 1, E gives T marked as 2, T gives ID marked as 3, and T gives open parenthesis E close parenthesis marked 4. Next, we will come to our generating pars parsing table. But to create parsing table, we need three <coughs> main columns which are state, action, and go to. State are the number state marked as 0 to 8 these are the state numbers see here these small numbers 0 4 3 and 5 7 8 6 2 1 these are the numbered states so uh, we will see in the parsing table that upon receiving certain symbols where does these states go and action contains all the terminal symbols which uh, states see and goes to other states and on on go to column we will uh, put all the uh, non terminal symbols here a and t a, e and t are the only non terminal symbols here so uh, let's start with state 0 which is this, this which is this state this state on seeing id on seeing id goes to state 1 1 that's why here we have put s1 on receiving bracket uh, uh, opening parenthesis it goes to state 2 so that's why state 2 uh, this uh, s state 0 on seeing e symbol goes to state for uh, state 4 but uh, we will not write here state 4 because this is a go to and uh, we generally put here g g4 it uh, represents this only but we will not write s we will write g so to avoid confusion and this state on receiving t goes to this state 3 again we will write g3 and uh, then moving on to state 1 uh, this is state 1. Now, as we can see, that state 1 has only incomings. See, only incomings. ID comes to this, ID comes to this, ID comes to th this, but it doesn't go anywhere. And I have already told that this is a reduced state. So, we have put here R3, 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 and R3 because uh, it, it comes from this we have marked this as number 3 this that's why we have marked the production say t gives id and c t gives id that's why r3 don't put here don't put here s1 or g1 it will become this 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 number will come here r3 so moving on to our next state which is s2 this this one is s2 and s2 on seeing id symbol on seeing id symbol it becomes difference between lr0 and lr1 would be that in lr0 we are only satisfied with the canonical items whereas in lr1 
along with the canonical items we also need the look ahead items which is a specific addition which helps us in like reducing the terms more accurately using grammar appropriations and in lr0 you can easily stop at when you have reduced the canonical items but in lr1 you can only stop once you have reduced the lr so lr uh, uh, look ahead items so now we'll be taking a look at an example in an example grammar here which is like S to CC, then C to CC again, and C to D. This would be our example grammar. Now, the first step would be augmenting that grammar. Where the first line we have augmented by writing this extra step, whereas dot goes to S, and the rest of the rules are same. Now, once again, we'll be producing the canonical items and drawing this whole diagram. Now, first, when we come to the like zeroth stage, we take the canonical item, S dot goes to dot, of s and the look ahead item is the dollar here so since there is a variable after the dot we'll be expanding the variable for here comes like s goes to dot cc for c we're also expanding and while expanding here since what's left after the dot is c and d we are taking both states with different look ahead objects so here once we have taken this capital c goes to small c capital c with the look ahead item small c and here once again we have taken the same thing capital c goes to small dot small c k and capital c with the look at item d it is done the, the same for c goes to dot d for once the c look at item and once for the d from here we'll be first let's like uh, process it for c capital c we'll be processing for capital c so one of them the one of the rules uh, have a uh, capital c followed by a dot so we'll be doing that while expanding that we see that s goes to c dot c the look at dollar so since there is once again this c being like after the dot we need to expand the variable and we get two states first the c goes to dot c c and the c goes to dot d and both of them have this look at dollar because after this initial variable c what was left is this dollar so the look at would be carried carry ahead and hence both of them get this look at dollar so now back to the state zero we'll be proceeding for the small c and we go here and there are like two of them so once we open the c goes to small c dot capital c with the c look at and c goes to small c dot capital c with the look at d now since both of them have this capital c after the dot once again we'll be expanding the variable and we'll be uh, putting the and after the variable, one has the C look ahead, one has the D look ahead. So we'll be putting the appropriate look ahead along with them. As we can see here, we have done like expanding the C, we have put a C look ahead once and a D look ahead once. And since there are also dot C's, like we'll be also doing this one, C goes to dot D with the C and D both look heads. Now, if we do for the D here, which was the la which were the last two, we'll be getting two of them. One of them is C goes to D dot with the look at c and c goes to d dot with the look at d and this would be one of the reduced states because we have reduced it up to its look at counterpart now going back to this stage three here if we like we have done it for the small c now if we be if we're doing it for the capital c then from here we'll be going to this stage four where once again sorry capital d i'm talking about small d if we do it for the small d this last two lines we'll be going back to this stage four once again where the d is reduced into its c and d look ahead states if we do it for the small c then we'll be going it uh, taking it back to its own cell because if we reduce it from here that is we move the dot here we'll be getting the same state and the same state will be expanded and reduced once again so it is going back to itself and from the stage two if we're going and reducing it for the c capital c then we get this stage that s goes to cc dot with the dollar look ahead and this is also reduced stage because we have reduced it up to its look ahead counter from stage two if we are reducing it for the small c like that is this second line then we get this one that c goes to small c dot capital c dollar look ahead now expanding for capital c as it is after the dot we get two lines this c goes to dot cc and dollar look ahead since after the variable there was this dollar and the c goes to dot d with a dollar look ahead once again now coming back to stage two if we do it for the small d then c dot of small d is reduced into c d dot with the look ahead dollar and this is also reduced it now uh, 
just saying in stage four we also did this c is reduced to dollar d dot of c dollar and c is reduced to d dot of so not c dollar just c and d which is almost equal to this stage but we are not equating them in one stage because the look heads are different and in lr1 we are more concerned about the look heads rather than simply the concerned canonical items so that's why this is a different one inherently different from from this one four and seven are different stages now coming back to the c if uh, if we like do it for the capital c part which is the first rule then we'll be getting that c goes to cc dot the dollar one another reduced stage and for the initial one where we i left this out intentionally the augmented line if we uh, go and reduce it for that then s dot goes to sorry s dash goes to s dot which has the look at dollar and this is known as the acceptance stage and this is our whole canonical item diagram after that we'll be going on along to number the production or the rules here like i've also taken the um, augmented one here s dot goes to s which is the zeroth one s goes to cc which is the one c goes to cc which is two and this would be three i've had made a mistake and wrote it as four c goes to d it's going to be the three third and here i've drawn the parsing table which is basically equal to this diagram so i'm not again explaining that but i'm just telling you one line so you get what it means in the zeroth stage we go to the small c into the stage three so i'll be writing here shift three and for the d you can see that from zero it's going to the stage four so it's writing shift four here we haven't shifted anywhere for the dollar so nothing under the dollar for the variable s we have gone into the state one which is the acceptance stage so i'll be writing here g1 which means basically go to one it's going to the state one for the variable it's not for the terminals and for the capital c here i'll that which is also a variable because evidently we only have two variables in this whole, whole example which is s and capital c so for c we are going as you can see from zero to stage two so that's why i've written g2 and this is what i've done basically throughout the parsing table i've just uh, reduced the whole diagram into a table and shown where and what is happening as in stage four here we can see it's being reduced so r3 r3 as grammar number three is being reduced and in stage eight which is here you can see that grammar number two one is being uh, two is being reduced it's, that's why r2 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 so this is what i have been doing uh, so this is the question what is the maximum number of reduced moves that can be taken by taken by a bottom of parser for a grammar with no epsilon and unit production that is a goes to epsilon and a goes to a small smaller to parse a string with n tokens so um, so first of all in order to get the maximum number of reduced moves we should try to make sure that in each sentential form only uh, one terminal is reduced and so i am going to the next question now for the grammar a derives a uh, double a that is a epsilon is not suitable for predictive parsing because the grammar is there are the four options that is given that is ambiguous left recursive right recursive or an operator grammar now we can see in this given grammar it has infinite parse trees for the string epsilon so the grammar is ambiguous and also a derives double a has left recursive now productive uh, we know that in productive parsing grammar should be free from ambiguity left recursion and left factoring now in this given grammar contains both ambiguity and left factoring but uh, because we are considering the ambiguity of a grammar first before uh, in respect to left, uh, left factoring so the ambiguity uh, carries more weight with uh, comparison to left factoring so here the question answer is ambiguous it's written which of the following grammar rules valid the requirements of an operator grammar pqr are non-terminal and rst are terminals and the given answer is b that is one and three only so uh, the operator grammar has some uh, precedence relations those are called rules and some of the and two of the rules are that, that this one this epsilon it is called empty right it shouldn't be on the right hand side which is there so this is obviously not the answer and another thing that two non terminals should be shouldn't be on the right hand side as the question says p q r a non terminal and in this one q r are, are on the right hand side so which gives us the answer that one and three only are the wrong ones so these two violate the requirements of an operator grammar. Uh, 
the next example is given give uh this is an expression grammar and e has some rules and f has some rules so the options are, are according to the precedence and the answer is b which is that this minus has high precedence and the start this is the working of the uh problem that i've taken an example that is 2 into 3 minus 5 and have drawn a parse tree according to the given rules where as it is shown that e uh, into f comes at first and then comes the f minus f so as it is a bottom up parser it will start from here that uh, this one has higher precedence for this will be evaluated then it will move on to the star one very good very good.